The purpose of this assignment is to introduce you to the Connected Components Workbench software, which is the environment where you will be programming the Allen Bradley Micro 800 family of PLCs. This assignment will also introduce you to the Micro 850 simulated PLC, which is built in to Connected Components Workbench. This simulated PLC allows you to test your programs without having to purchase an actual PLC. Connected Components Workbench supports three different programming languages. Structured Text, which is similar to C++, Python, VBA, etc. Ladder Logic, which is a visual programming language consisting of symbols. And Function Block Programming, which is also a visual programming language. The most common language used to program PLCs is Ladder Logic. Here's an example of a very simple Ladder Logic program which you will be creating in this assignment. Once the program has been written, you download it to the PLC, which can then run it. A PLC consists of input terminals where wires from various switches and sensors are connected and output terminals where wires are connected to the various devices to be controlled. A PLC program therefore is simply the logic that reads input signals and determines what the resulting output signals should be. The latter logic programming language allows you to write a program in a visual way similar to how you would create a wiring diagram using relay contacts and coils. The program contains two rails a positive rail, and think of this as if it were connected to the positive terminal of a battery, and a negative rail, and think of this as if it were connected to the negative terminal of a battery. The rails are connected in parallel by rungs, similar to rungs on a ladder, which is why this language is called ladder logic. To write a program, you simply drag and drop specific symbols from the toolbox onto a rung, like I did with this direct contact symbol. Then you link the symbols to variables or input-output terminals on the PLC. You read a ladder logic program very much like you would read a wiring diagram. Let me describe the logic defined by the first rung of this program as an example. When this contact connects, current could flow through the rung, which would therefore energize these outputs. And then if the contact on the left is released and no longer connected, then the current wouldn't be able to flow, and the output would no longer be energized. The PLC executes each rung in the program in sequence from top to bottom, scanning inputs and making related changes to the outputs. Once it has scanned the entire program, it goes back to the beginning and scans the program rung by rung again, and again, and again. It does this very quickly, roughly 50 times a second, if it's a simple program. In this assignment, you'll be writing your first ladder logic program and testing it on the simulated PLC. The program you will be writing will be taking inputs from two push-button switches and then turning on several pumps. Notice that the first button is called button 0 and the second button is called button 1. That's very common in automation. The first input is called input 0. When we count, we start with 0 rather than starting at 1. The same goes for the outputs. Notice pump 0, then pump 1, pump 2, pump 3. The logic of your program should allow an operator to push button 0, which should then turn on pumps 0 and pump number 1. And when you release the button, those pumps should be turned off. When you push button 1, it should result in pumps 2 and 3 being energized. And if you happen to push button number 1, turning on pumps 0 and 1, and button 1, turning on pumps 2 and 3, and if you hold bu both those buttons down together, it should have the added effect of turning on pumps 4 and 5. So let's go to Connected Components Workbench and write a ladder logic program that will have this functionality. Here I am in Connected Components Workbench. This is the start page right here. And I'm going to start a new project. Now I just have to name the project. Let's call it Day 17 Homework. And then I can specify a folder where that project will be saved. And I also want to make sure to check this box to add a device on the Create. That will allow me to choose which PLC I'm going to be programming for. Because I selected to add a device when I created the project, it brings this window up so I can choose the controller. The simulated controller is what we will be writing this code for. It's a Micro 850, and it's this one down here at the bottom, the Micro 850 simulation. Let's go ahead and select that and add it to the project. If we were to buy the physical Micro 850 PLC, this is what it would look like. It allows us to configure the PLC, and in our case, it's just a simulated PLC. We can write a program for this PLC by right-clicking here on this Programs folder and selecting to Add. And you can see here that we can add a program in either of these three languages, Structured Text, Ladder Diagram, or Function Block Diagram. Let's create a Ladder Diagram program. Once we've created the program, it just automatically names it Program 1. But I can rename it. Let's call it Day 17 Homework. 
And if I double click on this Day 17 homework program, it'll open up my programming environment. Uh, here's the toolbox. And uh, if you don't see this toolbox, you'll be able to expand it with one of the buttons over here. It's probably just collapsed. And this toolbox will allow you now to drag different symbols into your ladder. Let's grab a direct contact, drag it into the ladder. We're going to hover it over the plus sign at the beginning of this positive rail. And now this window automatically pops open that allows us to assign that direct contact to either a global variable, a local variable, system variable, or an I.O. point on our Micro 850 PLC. And if you're not seeing any of the Booleans, you might have to filter and say, show me all the Boolean I.O. points on the Micro 850. And it lists the outputs first. DO is uh, digital output. And then down here it begins a digital input. It starts with digital input 00. So let's pick this one and hit OK. So now this direct contact is associated with digital input 00 on my PLC. Now I can grab a direct coil and drag it onto this rung. And now let's connect that to digital output 00 on my PLC. Now when this contact closes, this output will be energized. But I want it to energize two different outputs when this direct contact is connected. So let's grab a branch and put the branch right here. And so now it's also a parallel branch where I can drag another direct coil and place it here. And in the I.O., let's connect that to digital output number one. When this input 00, zero is pressed, both of these will now energize. Now let's do another rung. If I grab this and drag it over, I'll add another rung to my program. Grab a direct contact, bring it in, assign this direct contact to digital input number one. And now let's grab a direct coil and put it here. Assign this one to digital output number two. We'll grab a branch and branch around this one and grab another direct coil and assign this to digital output number three. So let's grab a new rung. And this time I'll grab a direct contact again. And this one is digital input number 0. And I'm now going to grab another direct contact and place it right after this one. And we'll connect this one to digital input number 1. So now the only way power can flow through this rung is if both of these are connected. And if both of them are connected, let's bring this direct coil and connect it to digital output number four. And let's branch around it and bring in another direct coil and connect it to digital output number five. So now as this scans through this rung, if this one is connected, both of these will energize. And if this one is connected, both of these will energize. And if they both happen to be connected, these two will also energize. Now we're ready to compile our program. This button right here, the build button, is basically the compiler. It'll compile the program and tell us if we have any errors. We look down here, it says build, one succeeded, zero failed. So it looks like we're in great shape. Now we can go ahead and turn on the Micro 800 simulated PLC. Here's the power button. And we want to make sure the IP address is set to 127.0.0.1. .0 this is the loopback IP address. So we actually don't have a PLC connected to our Ethernet port. The PLC is internal to our computer. And so this IP address basically loops back to our own computer. I can change this to program mode and when it's in program mode I can come back to here and I can download this program to that PLC. And it'll bring up a connection browser where I can choose where that PLC is connected. I'll hit the plus here. This is the PLC that's connected through this Ethernet port. Now if you're not showing your PLC as active, chances are you'll have to go back and configure that Ethernet port right here in RS Links Classic. But once you've done that, then you should be able to see this and be able to download to it. So we'll choose OK. And when this window pops up, we can either download the program or download with project values. Downloading with project values is probably the most common. In this particular case, we don't have any project values that we've preset. But this is a good habit to get into to download with project values in case there were any project values that you preset within the program. In the bottom bar in blue, it shows that our download succeeded. So now we can go into our PLC. 
The PLC is in program mode now, but when I put this into run mode, it'll basically just read each rung of our ladder diagram from top to bottom, and it'll just scan that whole program over and over and over again until I bring it out of run mode. So let's put it in run mode. Now, this simulator can only be in run mode for 10 minutes because we have the free version. That's okay. We don't need to run it for more than 10 minutes. So it's now running the program, and you can see that because neither of these inputs are active, none of the outputs are active. But if I connect input 0, you'll see that these two outputs are now energized. And within Connected Components Workbench, you can see because I've closed this input 0, 0, power has been able to flow through here and energize both the outputs. If I turn off input 0, 0, the outputs are no longer energized. If I turn on input number 1, then outputs 2 and 3 are now energized. And you can see that here in Connected Components Workbench as well. I turn it off, then those outputs de-energize. Now if I turn on this one and keep it on, while at the same time turning on input number one, not only are these two outputs energized, and these two outputs are energized, but two additional outputs are energized. You can see that here. Because this contact has connected, these two here are energized. And this contact here is also connected, which means these two are energized. And because both of them are connected, these two are now energized as well.